Okay, third and final one for the day. This is from the chapter Star Wars, 1988. When it seemed possible that Star Trek V might proceed without D due to a salary dispute, I wrote the following poem to try and convince the studio heads that the picture could not possibly fly without D. I didn't tell the Kellys I was causing trouble at the studio, but word got back to them via Richard Arnold. Richard was so tickled with my poem that he called D, not knowing I was the author, and read it to him. D liked it so much that he called Richard back and had him read it again to Carolyn. Then he asked for two copies of it to be sent to him. For Frank Mancuso, William Shatner, Harv Bennett, and whomever else it may concern. Star Trek V, Dead or Alive. You waited a whole year so Spock could appear. You didn't use another actor. It'd have killed the success factor. And we know you wouldn't swap Kirks. We don't believe we're dressing jerks. So what makes you think you can do without Kelly? What are you using for brains, sand or jelly? You want our support and hard-earned money? You'd better be bringing us D then, honey. You'll ruin our joy in the bottom line if you don't wake up and pay him to sign. No one wants Star Trek to die. We all want to help it fly. But we have this god-awful premonition without DeForest Kelly who will pay the admission. This is not an idle threat. If Kelly's out, you can take bets. The show will fold and the only long lines will be for irate former fans carrying signs. K.M. Smith. Carolyn dropped me a note that read in part, Richard called and read us your poem to the studio. Very clever. Give handsome Deacon a chin tickle. I've about worn out his pics showing them around. Bye for now, Carolyn.